Star Trek Discovery is back with one of the last few episodes from the last season. So I'm going to be talking about Season 5, Episode 6, Whistle Speak. So if you haven't seen it, this will contain spoilers. Now, you know I've not been a massive fan of this season, and yeah, this is probably the worst episode that they've put out this season so far, and I'll get to why later on in the video. But first of all, thanks for taking the time to choose to watch this video. If you haven't done it already, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. But let's get to it. Bottle and Locke are still out there in shock horror, so is the next clue. Stamets is working to try and solve the mystery box clue to the thing to go somewhere to find the technology, maybe, I don't know. And remember again, this is technology that can destroy or create life seemingly anywhere, multiple places at once. Is it connected to the mycelial network? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But again, they're not really talking about the implications of this technology or what it means or what they're even going to do once they get their hands on it. In fact, this episode has almost nothing to do with the arc of the season whatsoever, and that's one of my main problems with it. Michael goes to see Kovic, and remember again, this is the whole existence of life stuff, and Starfleet only has one ship working on this, trying to solve this problem, apparently. Which seems a little bit odd when you think about it logically, because it's the whole fate of the universe, literally. And they're just hanging it all on this one ship that seemed to be side-questing every week. But, you know, let's just go with it. So Kovic is the name of all the original scientists who were involved in finding the technology. So again, another clue to a thing to get to the place and Colbert is talking to his dead grandmother. Now, I have no idea what they're doing with Colbert this season or why they're giving him so much focus because the way that they tell the story this season, character-wise, unless it's sort of Michael or Tilly or Colbert, everyone else is on a second, absolutely huge second place. I mean, characters like Saru, he's not even in this episode. There's a whole Detwar Owo bridge crew thing that's always going to be ongoing. And they just kind of force in Book as well at the end of the episode. And yeah, how do you feel about this season and how they're handling the characters? Or more importantly, how they're not handling them or managing their time? Let me know how you feel about that as well in the comments. But yeah, Colbert is talking to a hologram of his dead grandmother, who would have died at this point over 900 years ago. So how are they sort of extrapolating the knowledge and her personality? Because he makes a note saying that the hologram got something wrong, but how would it know to get something wrong from a woman who existed before Holodex existed? It's just one of those things that I can't really wrap my head around and completely threw me out of the episode straight away. And I wonder how they are going to tie all this Colbert stuff up as well. I can see someone on the team, probably Stamets, Colbert or Michael, having to make the big sacrifice, then they kill them and or bring them back to life with the progenitor's technology or, you know, they have to ascend to a higher level of existence. I am willing to put hardcore cash on the fact that one of those two will actually turn out to be true when it comes to the finale, but we're going to have to wait and see. In the meantime, they work out where they need to go next, and it's a planet called Helmino. I'm pronouncing that wrong, but it doesn't matter. Where one of the ancient scientists helped build a weather tower. And this is a whole Prime Directive episode because it's an unevolved planet, but yet the Prime Directive's already been broken because the Denobion scientists built a weather tower there and hid it from these primitives. So again, make of that what you will. <laughs> And the whole Prime Directive thing is a huge Star Trek arc that most captains need to deal with at least once throughout a season's run. I'm not just talking about this pops up once a season. It's a classic Star Trek trope that Discovery has never really touched on and they don't do it well in this episode. Now the reason the episode is called Whistle Speak is because whistling is part of these natives' way of communicating. And... After they establish that and then they beam down to the planet and do it, it doesn't make a reference or come back or impact the plot or episode in any way, shape or form. But not only is it a Prime Directive episode, it's also a Michael and Tilly episode because, you know, again, Saru's no longer on the crew, which we haven't had in a while and is going back to season one sort of classic disco episode setup. 
And they kind of do seem to be starting to set up the Starfleet Academy spin-off as well with Tilly. There's all these little references, but there's nothing clear exactly what they're going to do with this, at least yet. And I'm kind of surprised they haven't got more into that, because the writing is so heavy-handed on this show and so smug, I'm surprised they're able to hide it. Then set up the story when they beam down to the planet with a group of locals that's got zero to do, as I said, with the season arc, and won't go anywhere and won't matter, and they're never going to come back to these people or the implications of what happens here. And I went into this season knowing that it was going to be another side quest every week, but these side quests are getting less and less relevant to the actual plot of the show that they set up in the first episode. The closer they get to the ending of all this, and I know they didn't know it was the final season of Discovery or it was going to be the final season, but man, this just feels like it's miles away from the sort of episode one setup. I mean, it's not as far off as the whole Book Tarka thing last year, which I always bang on about every video, but it just feels like they're just so far to the sort of left of the main path that they can't really see it anymore. Instead, they spend the majority of the episode trying to explain this culture to us, and as I said, it's not going to matter next week. But anyway, Michael uses Moss to find the controls for the weather device. Yeah, I know. Well, Tilly takes part in a ritual race to the top of the tower, and it turns out it's a ritual sacrifice as well, so that's the twist. So they may need to break the Prime Directive in order to save Tilly. At this point in the episode, did you even forget about that? Because I've not mentioned really anything to do with the race, because the race doesn't go anywhere. And the whole part when it does get to Michael breaking the Prime Directive is she has to beam in in front of one of the locals right in his face when clearly she could have just came round the corner or hid somewhere. And loads of people have pointed this out online straight away when they watched the episode and I agreed that this is just very bad writing. I mean, I know it's Discovery and I know it's what we've come to expect, but come on guys, at least put a little bit of intelligence into this. But seriously, beam in round the corner, like, what's what's the problem there? Saves money as well, because you don't need to do the transporter effect, just the noise. Anyway, of course they save the day and show them how to fix the futuristic weather device, so fuck the Prime Directive, I guess, at the end of this episode. And man, is this going to upset some Trek fans, and I've already seen it online already. None of this is handled brilliantly at all. And the whole thing with Michael saying, hey, you know, we aren't gods, but it's okay to believe in gods, but we know they don't exist, sort of, kind of, I guess, is very ambiguous as well and doesn't go anywhere. You know, there's going to be no repercussions for Michael doing this. She's not going to be taken before Admiral Vance next week. Raynor isn't going to become the captain. None of this is going to matter. But they have the next piece of the puzzle and on to the next clue they go. They do have a bit of a discussion at the end of the episode with the realisation they need to be careful what they're going to do when they find this tech. But again, there's no talk or debate from anyone on the ship, the crew, Starfleet, the higher-ups at all about what's the goal once we get this tech. It's just, we have to find it. But then when you find it, what do you do with it? And I can't believe there's only a few episodes left and this season hasn't really gone past what it's set up in episode one. Again, it's all over the place, the characters are all over the place, the way that the pacing is dealt with is all over the place. They seem to think they've got all the time in the world to tell this story when they don't. The fact that they're not really focusing in on any one character, because we get a book, Michael Tilly, Colbert kind of episode, sort of, but then Stamets and Saru just feel completely ignored this season, which makes me wonder... How this is going to end when it does come to the final episodes. I know that there was a reshoot of one of the scenes in the final episode. Whether it was the final scene or not, I don't know. It's probably going to set something else up with Starfleet Academy. It seems that they just come up with a puzzle for them to solve every week to go on to the next thing, and that's essentially been Star Trek Discovery since season two. It's just been side quest after side quest going nowhere. The only sort of benefit I'll say this season has that the others don't is they haven't really gone on to the whole trauma trek thing yet because Discovery definitely went through a few years of characters just spewing out their trauma randomly for no reason and it being really awkward and shoehorned into an episode. So I guess that's an improvement. 
but the overall pacing and structure is just, yeah, I don't get it. I mean, if you like this episode because it does have sort of classic TOS vibes, then that's absolutely fine. But if you ask me, this is one of the worst written episodes, not only of Star Trek Discovery, but probably Star Trek of all time. I mean, it's the year 2024 and we've got to do better than that, guys. I mean, come on. But as always, these are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, or you can follow me on Twitter at The Geeks Reviews and contact me there. Do you have any hope left for the final two episodes of this season? What do you think they're going to do once they discover the progenitor's tech? And who do you think is going to make the big sacrifice, die, and then come back to life because this show can't kill its characters? Let me know. I want to know your theories because I'm going to do a few theory videos on what's going to happen or what might happen. Spoiler alert, it's more side quests. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. And as always, my name's Al. Thanks for watching. You know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You just put your lips together and blow. <laughs>